So today we're going to take a look at how to overclock your Skylake CPU and I'm going to do this in a Mega Man shirt. Okay, so let's get straight on with this overclocking tutorial. And the first thing you want to do is grab a program called IDA64. Now I'll put the link in the description below on where you can download this. But essentially it's a program that will allow you to monitor your voltage and also stress your CPU to sort of ascertain whether you've got a stable overclock or not. So after you've got this program and installed it and got it all ready, you can then click power and then just restart your computer. And now once you've restarted your computer upon booting it up, you just press the delete key or the F2 key, depending on the BIOS or the maker of your motherboard. Now something that I will stress about overclocking is that the BIOS on my motherboard is the MSI BIOS. If you've got an ASRock motherboard or an ASUS motherboard or a Gigabyte motherboard, it's gonna look a little bit different to you to what I'm using but it will have a lot of the same features, whether they just be under similar names or slightly different names. So once you're in the BIOS, it'll look like this. Uh, if you're in the MSI BIOS, you can then press F7 and that'll change it to the advanced view. This is the view that I like to use here. And so the first thing you wanna go to is overclock. And now there should be a list of options here. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll leave it on explore mode normal, even though I do like to use expert. But for what's worth, we'll just put it on normal here. And then with your numpad. So this is one thing you have to make sure is that you're using your numpad. I don't know how many people message me saying, Brian, I can't overclock. I can't set any settings in manually. That's because you have to use your numpad on your keyboard. So with that being said, we're gonna go for a 4.2 gigahertz overclock, which is pretty much a base overclock and it's guaranteed on pretty much any 6600K or any 6700K. So on the CPU ratio there, just press 42 on your numpad and press the enter key on your numpad. Uh, so now the ring ratio, this is something I'm gonna stress. Don't worry about this if you're a beginner, it's not really worth it. As long as you can see here, as long as the core, uh, the ring ratio is below the CPU ratio. As you can see here, it's at 3.9 gigahertz or 3900 megahertz. That's gonna be perfectly fine. We don't have to touch that setting. And then we can go down here to the actual voltages. So CPU core voltage, I'm gonna guess, I'm just gonna say 1.25 volt should be easily obtainable on any 6600K or 6700K to get a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. Though if it's not, you might wanna give it a little bit more voltage by pressing the plus key on your numpad so you can get the designated voltage there. But uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you can just set that to 1.25 volt and that's all you really have to worry about with a basic overclock. So let's try that out. We'll just restart our computer now. So we go up to the X symbol here. You can also use your mouse as well if that's plugged in and you just go yes. So save configuration, yes. And now upon rebooting our computer, we just take it into IDA64, stress test it, uh, if it's crashing, if your computer is crashing, then you will want to go back into this BIOS by pressing delete and then giving that voltage just a little bit more. One thing to keep in mind is that I do not recommend going past 1.35 volt on the CPU core. This is on Windows 10 at the moment. So I'm using Windows 10 and on the Skylake architecture. So once you're on the desktop here, you just open up IDA64 and you go yes. And then once we're in the program here, we can then, uh, sorry, that's just, that's just my computer. I upgraded to Windows 10, so it's a little bit buggy. But we'll forget about that. Uh, you go up, once you're into IDA64, we just go up to tools here, and then we just go up to system stability tests. So we open that one up, go up to tools again, and open up IDA64 CPU ID. So what this will do is this will give you an idea of how much voltage your CPU is running at and also your, if you stress test it, what temperatures you will get. So once we've got those two loaded up, we can then click on start here. So hit start. And as you can see here, it's loading up the CPU to its maximum uh, capability there. So stress testing it in other words. And you wanna run this for at least a good 10 minutes. I find after about 10 minutes, you're really homing in on either stable or near stable. Though honestly, if you've got a full stable overclock and you can't risk anything crashing, then you're obviously gonna to wanna to do some real world benchmarks because I've found that I can run benchmarks like Prime 95, like Ida 64 for a good 24 hours and 
my programs still crash occasionally. And so I've had to up the CPU voltage anyway. So one thing to keep in mind with these stress testers is that they won't give you a complete guarantee sometimes of a 24 seven or 24 hours a day, seven days a week overclock. So what we got here is pretty much like, I'm pretty sure that this overclock should be okay. So we're just gonna test this out for 10 minutes and then we'll jump back to see if it did pass the test. So as you can see here, after about 10 minutes of passing the stress test, it's still running fine at 4.2 gigahertz at 1.25 volt. Now, one thing you will wanna take a look at quickly as well are your temperatures. As you can see here, I just got over 50 degrees on one of my cores here. Uh, so that's really good temperatures. I'd say once you start going around about 80 degrees, 85 degrees, that's when you have to worry because your CPU will actually start to throttle and that'll mean reduced performance. Though at these temperatures, my CPU is perfectly fine. It's not gonna throttle at all. So there you have it guys. That is a 4.2 gigahertz overclock done very easily. Now, one thing I will do just to assure that this is a stable overclock is I will load up some games, play some games, obviously start doing maybe a little light render just to test and make sure that the overclock's okay. Though if it does start crashing, I will want to go back into the BIOS and just give it a little more voltage. Also, before we go out, I'll quickly recommend some other popular overclocks, maybe 4.4 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. So that's another popular overclock. However, keep in mind, and this is one thing I'm gonna stress before we close out, is that every CPU is different. Some CPUs may be able to get to 4.6 gigahertz at 1.3 volt. Some may only be able to get to 4.2. So as I was saying before, if that 4.2 gigahertz crashes, you might have to give it a little bit more voltage here. So it really is just a matter of testing out your own CPU and finding the overclocks with this correlation here between voltages and the CPU uh, ratio. So however, my CPU does get to 4.6 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. 1.35 volts. So that's how, that's about where my CPU tops out at. I can't get it to boot at 4.8. I can get it just to boot at 4.7, though it isn't stable at those speeds. However, 4.6 gigahertz is highly satisfiable and I'm really happy with this overclock. So we'll just close out there. You can also, yeah, I'll quickly mention 4.4 at 1.3 volt. So there's some popular overclocks for you guys. However, I'm just gonna close out at 4.6 and see if that runs for you guys. And then we'll move over to a quick conclusion. So there we have it there guys, that is a 4.6 gigahertz overclock and that's at 1.35 volt. Now also about memory, I would recommend for the better part just locking in those XMP profiles and I'll put in a guide in the description below uh, link where you can check it out on how to lock in XMP profiles for your memory, but that is very straightforward as well. So with that being said, we'll move on now to a quick conclusion. So there you have it guys, that is a real basic... <laughs> so there you have it guys, that is a real basic how-to on how to overclock your Skylake CPU. That's the 6600K or the 6700K, and honestly, they're not going to differ when it comes to overclocking. They're gonna pretty much require the same voltages to get to the same speeds on average. So anyway guys, if you have any questions on how to overclock your Skylake CPU or anything you wish to know further, then drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Tech Your City if you wanna see more tech news and reviews. With that being said, I'm gonna peace out and I'll catch you later. Bye.